absolutely crisp and clear sunny. First Saturday in the month of November. Finds Wisconsin three hours away from Madison, taking on number 10, Iowa. Iowa ranked number 10 in the country. Wisconsin, three losses this year by a combined 11 points. Look at the action right now as it stands in the Big Ten. Iowa 5-0, Ohio State 4-0. The Buckeyes with a key contest today at home against Minnesota. As for Iowa, they face a lot of adversity today, playing without Fred Russell, the team's leading rusher, number 19 in the nation rushing, but he will not be in uniform because of a hand injury. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Welcome to Iowa City. Bob, Kirk Ferentz, the head coach of Iowa, and Barry Alvarez, Wisconsin's head man, used to coach here together for five years. When you look at their teams and the way they play right now, it's as if they're coaching from the same manual handbook. Mark, these two teams are mirror images of each other, particularly on offense. Both of them have quarterbacks that can run and throw. Both have explosive tailbacks that run behind big offensive lines. For Iowa, Brad Banks, our quarterback, he's playing as good, if not better, than any quarterback in the country right now. Fred Russell, Iowa's tailback, won't play today. But if you're a Hawkeye fan, don't panic. Jermell Lewis is talented. He had 109 yards last week rushing against Michigan. Look at the best buy backs and receivers. Lewis, Cervantes, Jones, Hinkle, and Dallas Clark, an All-American candidate at tight end. Take a look at that big offensive line for Iowa. Four seniors and one junior up front. Tall and extremely athletic by Howard Hodges had a couple of sacks last week, applying a lot of pressure in their victory over Michigan. Let's take a look at the linebackers for Iowa. Worthy, Barr, and Grant Steen. Fred Barr, the leading tackler on this football team for Iowa. Here's a look at the secondary, a secondary that statistically is not that impressive, but they have done a great job on the field where it counts. Banks out of the shotgun. Poor snap. Banks makes a play out of it. Hinkle. Hinkle gets the first down for the Hawkeyes at the 43. I mean, give the defensive coaches a chance. Uh, gimmicks and gimmicks. Second and 13 under pressure, and he's sacked by Roth. Matt Roth with the sack for the Hawkeyes. And that's the last play of the first period. Neither team able to put points on the board. Wisconsin trying to make it six straight over Iowa. We'll be right back. Third down and three, Cervantes and Lewis. Here's a little option. Into the boundary, Lewis got an alley. And a first down at the 29-yard line, Jermell Lewis. Got a nice block on the play by his fullback, Cervantes. It is cating time here in Kinnick Stadium, Mark. 17 for 17 on the season. He is one of these guys. He came up to me at practice yesterday and said, Coach, you tried to jinx me last week in Michigan. I said, you know what? You are beyond jinxing. So we can go ahead and talk about anything we want, Mark. This guy right here is a machine. He's an unjinxable. Close your eyes and... Hey, Kaden, his key phrase when he kicks the ball, he says to himself, control the situation. Nice and slow. And he knocks it through. That's his 21st consecutive field goal. That one coming from 32 yards out. Iowa with the lead when we come back. Mike Allen, 8 of 13 on the season. Low snap. But they got it up and good. 26-yard field goal, no flags on the play, and we'll be back, not at a three, right after this. Once again, the co-offensive player of the week in the Big Ten Conference, sharing the award with Bollinger. This time, he hits his target, Brown, just over midfield at the 47 for the first down. He's brought down by Jim Leonard. Third down and nine for Wisconsin. Bollinger to pass. Under heat and sacked by the conference's leading sack exchange, led by Jared Klaus. Hodges also in on the stop. Mark, and if they win out, obviously they may be in the Fiesta Bowl. First and 10 for Banks on the quarterback draw, called play. Brad Banks. Serving up some fries with that shake on the Wisconsin defense. Second down and 15. Banks completes it. 
Brown down to the 19-yard line. Hits his favorite target. Banks out of the shotgun. Goes through his progression. Complete at the 22-yard line to Ed Hinkle. Kept working to get open, and Banks rewarded him with the pass. Brown in the slot. Hinkle also to the bottom of your screen. Into the end zone, wide open. Touchdown. A busted coverage, and Brown made him pay. And I mean, there was nobody within the 319 area code close to it. It's going to be pretty obvious right here that there's a major breakdown in this coverage. It looks to me like Wisconsin is trying to play some kind of a bracket three-on-two coverage reading the routes of Iowa. And they completely turn Maurice Brown loose for the touchdown. And Mark, if you're going to turn someone loose, don't turn Maurice Brown, their leading wide receiver, loose. But it appeared to me that Wisconsin playing some kind of a bracket three-on-two man-to-man combination coverage, a total breakdown right there for Wisconsin. Looks like that I mean, meant the wrecking crew. <laughs> Not black shirts. This is Bollinger drilled by Derek Pagel. He put his hat right on his number five. This is a big play in college football right now, the decide play where the quarterback reads the defensive end. If he closes, the quarterback keeps it. But you're going to see the speed right here of Kevin Worthy tracking Brooks Bollinger down. And a big lick right there on the sidelines by Derek Pagel, number 25, the free safety. And the trainer now taking a look at uh, Brooks Bollinger. I mean, he got hit hard by Derek Pagel. One of the disadvantages of having a mobile quarterback, you saw his helmet snap back right there with the hit by Derek Pegel. But a disadvantage of a quarterback who runs is he is going to take these kind of shots. And wow, that rattled that headgear right there. An interesting first half of play, which saw both teams tied at three for most of the half until that late touchdown by Mo Brown on the busted coverage. 10-3 at halftime. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. First down and 10 for Iowa. First possession of the second half. Banks going to Clark. Dallas Clark finds a seam down in the middle of the field to the 31-yard line. He got in behind Ryan Aiello. They're going to throw the football over top of you. Banks going back to pass again once more down the middle of the field. Complete to C.J. Jones. First down, Hawkeyes at the 12-yard line. Mr. Automatic, Nate Kading. This one coming from 30 yards out. Don't even think about it. Nate Kading continues to rewrite the record books at Iowa with respect to field goals. Knocks it through. The Hawkeyes lead by 10. Second down and 10 for Brad Banks and the Hawkeyes. Trying to improve to 6-0 in Big Ten action. Banks has a man open at the 42. Brown hand walks all the way down to the 25. That is just a demonstration of the explosiveness of that Iowa Hawkeye offense. Banks over 200 yards today passing. Third and second. Oh. They run the jailbreak screen. Clark, touchdown, Iowa. For the second time today, a wide open Iowa receiver makes it into the end zone. Mark, this is a great design. Everybody knows the jailbreak play. I was setting up the jailbreak with Dallas Clark and Maurice Brown blocking out. C.J. Jones looks like he's going to catch the jailbreak. Wisconsin bites. Iowa runs the jailbreak and go. So Wisconsin anticipates the jailbreak. They bite on it. Iowa sells the jailbreak and then runs right by him for a touchdown. That is a great design play, particularly because Iowa had so much success last week on the jailbreak against Michigan. And it's 20-3 for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Brad Banks 
leading his down team down the field and into the end zone. We'll be right back. But go back to Iowa's defense forcing three three and outs so far in the second half against Wisconsin's uh, 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 Wisconsin's offense. Banks going to take off on his own. What a move. Brad Banks stopped on a dime, didn't leave the Badgers any change, got a first down at the 30-yard line. There's Fred Russell in street clothes today. Banks on the slant for Brown, still on his feet. Mo Brown with Mo Yards. Do we need to call this? <laughs> From 27 yards out, Caden. Oh! That might be the one that ends the streak, Nate Kading. And that is his first miss in his last 23 attempts. I'm speechless. It had to happen sometime. Sorge under pressure and sacked. Back at the 29-yard line. And now Sorge is down in the field, so with Bollinger already out. Sorge down. The plot thickens for the Badgers. The picture on your screen, a coach's worst nightmare. Brooks Bollinger on the right, injured in the second quarter. On the left, Jim Sorge injured just a few moments ago. Owen Daniels, the third string quarterback in the ballgame, back to pass for Wisconsin. And he's sacked back at the 35 by Jonathan Babineau. They've got to get to the 28 of Iowa. Sorge to pass into the end zone. And it's intercepted by Javon Johnson. Took a while to sort it out. But number 26 Johnson emerges from the pile with the ball. That's his third pick of the season. Wisconsin here, excellent protection, buys time. You just throw the jump ball situation. Great vertical leap right there by Jovan Johnson, the young freshman, going up and getting that football. I mean, he is up in the air, out wrestles or. Second down and four for the Hawkeyes. All right, Reese. Thanks to pass. Clark. Still on his feet. Got a great block on the edge. First down, Hawkeyes at the 47-yard line. They don't forget coming up after the game. College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura. Huge stories today in college football, including Rutgers, who at last look was leading Miami. This one picked off. Pagel. And Derek Pagel steps out of bounds to the 30-yard line. I uh, thought Mark, Marcus Schnorr might get a... Uh, well, over 70,000 people, most of them staying right until the end here, gathering today at Kinnick Stadium on a sunny, brisk, and cool late November afternoon to watch their hometown team, the Hawkeyes, move one step closer to perhaps a perfect, unblemished record in conference play. And were it not for two uh, third-quarter fumbles by Brad Banks, they might be undefeated. Mark, they're as hot as any football team in this country. They're as balanced as any football team in the country. And with that kicking game, I think they can beat any football team on the, in the country. They're a legitimate top five team. We showed you on one of our earlier broadcasts, they've got a sign inside their weight room that says, the road to Pasadena goes through these doors. And they believe it to a man. The final score once again, 20 to three for the Hawkeyes who improved to nine and one on the season, six and zero in conference play. Coming up next, it's the college game day scoreboard presented by Acura, followed by Illinois at number 21, Penn State. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Holly Rowe and Bob Davey, I'm Mark Jones saying so long for Maya right now. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. So Iowa, a 20-3 winner. The Hawkeyes remain unbeaten in Big Ten play. Glad to have you with us on the College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura. And Trev, after the emotional win that Iowa had last week against Michigan, 
came in against an inspired Wisconsin team that played very tough, yes. very hard defense in the first half and came away with a solid win. I agree with Bob Davey. I don't know if they're in the top five, but I'll tell you this. Iowa is definitely playing like a team that deserves to be in the top five. There's a little discrepancy in terms of how you rate them there. But the bottom line is we know about the offense. I think offensively, Iowa struggled a little bit. Wisconsin's defense played well, but Iowa's defense is now forget about the statistics. It doesn't matter. They have a good defense. They're the best team in the Big Ten. Bottom line. Bob Davey made an excellent point during that first half and the second half of the game about how the statistics can be misleading. Yep. Certainly the only stat Kirk Ferentz cares about right now is the fact he's still undefeated in the Big yep. Ten. He's standing by with our Holly Rowe. Kirk, obviously it's too early to talk about the Rose Bowl, but your performance by Brad Banks and your defense, bull-like aspiration. Well, I'll tell you, Holly, we, we knew it was going to be a very hard-fought game. We have so much respect for Wisconsin, what they've done over the last 10 years. And it was just great, a great team effort. Brad played well. Our defense is really starting to come on now, and that's something we knew was going to be important for us. We saw this last week against Michigan, again today against Wisconsin, really having to plug along in the first half, but then you open up the playbook in the second half, and your receiving game has really come alive. Well, you know, we're in conference play now, and every game's going to be tough. We know that coming in. Uh, you know, and when, when we had to, our guys made some plays. I thought our coaching staff did a great job at halftime with some adjustments. All right, I know a lot of our announcers are jumping on the bat. Thanks for Heisman bandwagon. What do you think? Well, yeah, I love Brad at Iowa. I know that. I, anything else that happens is great, and that's how we feel about all our players. But I'll tell you, he's all Iowa. I know that. All right, two games ahead on the schedule. How do you keep your team focused and settle down? It's the same thing we've been doing each and every week. Uh, you know, we have Northwestern coming in here next week. I got a feeling it's going to be a pretty good environment here in Kinnick like it always is. Yeah, we'll, hey, we'll try to do our best against them, and then we'll worry about the next one after that. All right, you say the hay's not in the barn. This week you said eight is not enough. What's going to be enough, Coach? Well, now it's nine. All right, that's, that's pretty easy. We're just going one time at a, one game at a time. Thank you very much. Thanks. Reese Davis, back to you in the studio. Holly, thank you very much. And, you know, they're excited and as well they should be. What do you think about Brad Banks for the Heisman? Top five in terms of my Heisman, Brad Banks is obviously in my top five.